Oh, brilliant. Press it in like this. Ho oh, ho ho. And now we have an arcade stick with a screen. Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. I've got a fun thing to unbox today. It's actually from like 20 years ago. It's an arcade stick and it's actually pre-owned. And what's funny about this stick is that I already own it. I've actually already got one of these in the UK, but I decided to buy another one because I really want to play stuff on my Sega Dreamcast. I actually bought this like six years ago or seven years ago or so. I was just playing random games on there like Crazy Taxi and Soul Calibur, but recently I was like, I really want to play an old Street Fighter game again. I was like, what? How can I play a Street Fighter and Alpha game with training mode, but I don't want to play Alpha 3? And I was like, wait, why don't I play Capcom vs SNK? And I was like, well, I've got Capcom vs SNK 2 on my PlayStation 3. The whole time I was playing it, I was like, feels a bit laggy. There's just something not quite right about this. And I put this out to Twitter. I was like, if I want to play a nice, snappy, fast version of Capcom vs. SNK 2, what is the best version I can get? And everyone said, get yourself a Dreamcast. I was like, well, I've already got one of these. Anyway, the main event of today's video is this Dreamcast arcade stick. Let's get it out of the box and test it. All right, so this is the arcade stick. It's roughly 20 years old, but according to the site that I bought it, it's in almost new condition, so hopefully it won't have the buttons worn out or the stick worn out, though I think they can be replaced. I'll have to like change the size of the holes and all that because they're not really the standard size buttons. I think it's by a company called Agitech, but then again, I actually don't know what company Agitech is. I don't know if they're a Japanese company or an American company. All I know is that it says Dreamcast on the box, and when I was a kid, as far as I was concerned, this stick was made by Dreamcast. I think the only stick that I had before this was the Super Nintendo, I think it was called like the Super Advantage or the Advantage Arcade Stick or something like that. It was a really weird stick. But when I was a kid, I played Third Strike with this and I played Giga Wing with this. Let's get it out the box. But, but first, before we get out the box, I really want to show you this. Arcade okay, Stick Dreamcast will take you to a brand new world. It's not just a TV game, but a PDA, network system, and a whale? A lot more. A new level of entertainment awaits you. I just kind of get over this. TV game. I mean, I don't know if the box said this in the West, but the Japanese box says TV game, and actually to this day, they still call video games TV games sometimes. When I was teaching English, kids would be like, how do you say TV games in English? It's like, well, I don't even know. I've never heard of a TV game. PDA. Do kids even know what a PDA is? But we're not here to talk about PDAs. We're here to talk about arcade sticks. And as you can see, it will be the arcade stick the six buttons, start button, and a place to put the VMU. So look forward to the bit where we take the Dreamcast controller and put this inside the arcade stick. I have no idea if it's actually going to function. Who knows, maybe the parts have corroded over time and they don't work anymore. I have to admit, it wasn't that expensive either. It was like 8,000 yen, which I think is an average price for this sort of product, which is roughly like 60, 50, 60 dollars. Pull it out of the box. Oh, 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 that is so nostalgic. Something you may not know about buying used Japanese products is that they say used and often they say, oh, it's got scratches and we're gonna give you a discount because it's a bit dirty and it's a bit scratched and it's a bit used and worn. Then you get it out of the box and I bet you anything, it will be in perfect, pristine condition. Ready for this? <laughs> the Green Goblin. Oh wow. It is, as I expected, in perfect mint condition. I haven't touched any of the buttons or pressed anything, so who knows how worn out it is, but you can't, I can't see any form of wear and tear, except maybe here you can see there's, oh, but that's just, that's just a bit of dirt. Feels okay. We won't know until we plug it in whether all these switches actually function, but it's, it sounds okay so far. Let's try, let's try these buttons. Yeah. It's so loud. That's, that's a really loud stick. That rivals the Victrix Pro for, for loudness of button. Oh, wow. Ouch. And now the moment you've been waiting for, I know you want to see this. This is the VMU. This was popular back in the day because PlayStation had something similar to this with the PlayStation 1. They had something called the Pocket Station, which was a memory card with a screen on it. And so Sega completely unashamedly, I mean, who knows, maybe they had the idea first, but I doubt it 
completely unashamedly made something almost exactly the same. It's a, it's, it's a memory card with a PlayStation, uh, sorry, a memory card with a Game Boy built into it. And sometimes you could actually load games onto here, like, like a mini Chocobo Tamagotchi style game, or like a mini version of Tetris, Space Invaders, that sort of thing. And to plug it in, we just slot it into this port like so. And once that slots in, turn it over, we just press it in like this. Ho ho ho! And now we have an arcade stick with a screen. Very unusual thing to see. And now I think the last thing we need to do is plug it in and see whether it actually functions or not. All right, I've got the game loaded up. We actually played this on stream on Sunday, but I was using the PlayStation 3 version. And of course there was a bit of lag, but I'm hoping, because I played this on controller the other day and it wasn't, it actually felt less laggy. Even though I'm using this, I'm led to believe this is actually quite a cheap cable. This cost me something like 40 or $50 here in Japan. Anyway, even with the extra lag incurred as a result of using this cable, it feels better than the PS3 version. But more importantly, what you want to know about is this. This is the Agitech official Dreamcast controller and it's so cool. You can even see that it says Capcom versus SNK2 there in the little window. I'm not even sure if maybe if you go into different modes, maybe it will change. More importantly, let's just check to make sure all of these buttons actually work. One thing I did notice when I was setting the date earlier is that if you press down like this, can you see that? The spring, I don't know if it's because the spring is loose I think probably because the spring is loose, it's not going back and staying in position. It's, after I'm pressing down, it's going back to up again. So that is going to be a little bit of a problem unless I'm completely in control of the stick and I don't let go of it. But this is an easy mod to change, I think. Even if it does involve a little bit of drilling, it shouldn't be too difficult to, to swap the stick out. First things first, left, right, down, up. That all seems to be working. Super jumps are pretty difficult. Whoa, this stick, this stick is pretty light actually. It shifts around in my lap quite a lot. Light punch, medium punch, strong punch. Light kick, medium kick, strong. Oh, sweet, okay, so all the buttons are functional and we know that start menu is also functional. So this is a good start. Oh yeah, this is brilliant. All right, let's see if I can do the one combo that I learned. Nope. Oh, brilliant. All right. It feels pretty cheap. Now that I've used sticks like, you know, the Hori RAP, I've used the Mad Cats TE2+, Plus, the Razer Pantera, and also the Victrix Pro, coming to something like this, which would have been pretty luxurious for its day. And I had one of these as a kid, but I never really thought about whether it was luxurious or not. I just thought, yeah, I've got an arcade stick and it's big and heavy. To me, as a kid, this stick was big and heavy, but now that I'm holding it, as you can see now, like it falls in between my legs. So I've got to hold my legs together in order for this to stay in place. And also just from moving, look, if I do the uh, super jump, so down up like this, you can see, look how much the, the stick sh like shifts like that. It's like shifting right out of my lap. Unfortunately, it does not have padding all over the bottom. In fact, it only has these four little pads here, which make basically no difference whatsoever. In terms of button responsiveness, it feels as as good as any other button. I would say that the buttons are not, they're not very fast reacting. Sound was definitely return more quickly than these buttons, or maybe it's just these buttons are a little bit old. Definitely doesn't feel as nice as uh, the Sanwa stick that I'm usually, that I usually use. It feels a lot closer to the Hori Fighting Stick Mini 4. Actually, honestly, it's about similar, it's a similar feel. But normally on the sticks I usually have with Sanwa levers built in, they've got a little black collar that covers this part over here. You don't touch the shaft itself. But because you touch the shaft itself, it feels a lot like playing with the Hori Fighting Stick Mini. It's, it's super loose. You can barely see it, but if I turn on my inputs, you can probably start to see right, right, right. Can you see that? I'm getting left as well. If I hold my hand on the stick, it's not as bad. If you hold tightly onto the stick when you play, it probably won't be a problem. This spring is very loose, and as a result, it doesn't it doesn't like return to neutral as quickly as I'm used to. Let's try Kyo, shall we? Now for such a small stick, I have to say that actually the layout is really, really nice. It would be nice if I could I don't know, have some extra space to rest my hands over here, but more importantly, that it would be nice if I had some space on the left and the right of the stick so that I could rest it in the middle of my, my legs without it sliding down in between my legs. The buttons feel like when you hit them, they're just dead. If I had to compare it, it does feel a lot like the Hori Fighting Stick Mini 4. 
I would say that probably the, the Quanba drone feels nicer than what you get with this. So if you're thinking like, oh man, I'm gonna get the retro Dreamcast stick and the buttons that are built into it and the stick that's built into it and it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be like my main stick. I'll just put like a universal board in it and we'll play on PS4 with it and all that. You're getting buttons and a stick that feel kind of cheaper than what you would get for like a Quamba drone, which is also quite a light stick and small, or pretty much the same form factor as this. The only thing is that if you buy a Quamba drone, you're, it's gonna be easier to replace these buttons because it's actually got holes that are 30 millimeter in size. And because the size of these buttons are closer to something like, I don't know, 28 millimeter or whatever, it's gonna require some drilling in order to get normal Sunwa or Gamer Finger buttons to fit in here. Let's make do with what we've got though. Kyo looks, it's so weird that his moves look different in this game. Wow, I'm really impressed that I was able to play with this as a kid because either the buttons have become a little like less snappy and the stick has become less springy than when it was brand new 20 years ago, or these parts have always just felt kind of cheap. It actually feels pretty cheap now that I'm coming back to it. All my childhood dreams are being crushed right now. Though, Fortunately, it's not like I waited my whole life so that I could finally own one of these. It's, I actually owned this stick as a kid and I'm just buying it again because I don't have access to the old one right now. It sounds pretty hollow as well. So loud. So glad I've got headphones on at the moment. So actually one of the main things that I wanted to do coming back to Capcom vs SNK is that I didn't really learn any of the grooves when I was a kid. I just played everything in C groove. But the truth is, I think Capcom vs SNK is really fun. Like, I don't know if it's fun to watch tournaments, but I always thought it was like a fun game to watch from the sidelines because I, I thought, wow, A groove looks really cool. And when people do creative combos with A groove, I thought that was like really interesting. And that's what I kind of came back to this game for. I won't make any comments about whether the stick feels responsive because actually the game, I'm running it through this HDMI adapter, which technically has a bit of lag in it because it, it, right now it definitely feels better than the PlayStation 3 version, but it's still not perfect. So what I really want to do when I learn how to play more of this game is to open up this A groove thing and do stuff like this, because this is what looks really interesting for me. Because I never really truly learned how to do it when I was a kid. And it's one of those things, it's like, I'd always love to go back to Capcom vs SNK and actually learn how it worked. And definitely the, the stream that I did recently, I spent, I spent five and a half hours like learning more about the game. I was like, whoa, this game is deep. I need to learn more about it. All right, I'm going to leave it for there. I just wanted to share my unboxing of the Dreamcast, the original Agitech arcade stick for Dreamcast that I actually bought something like 20 years ago when the Dreamcast came. It was under 20 years ago, but you know, you know thereabouts, almost two decades ago when the stick came out. I have to admit, I thought it would feel a bit more solid because in my memory as a child, buying this basically to me as a kid holding this, this was the biggest, heaviest thing I had ever seen in my whole life. But now that I'm holding it, well actually you can't see because of the green screen, but now that I'm holding it like this, it feels significantly lighter and smaller than I remember as a kid. And as a result, it means that it does slip around in your lap, which you can fix by putting some padding all over the bottom because it's important to have padding all over the bottom on your sticks instead of these four pokey little pads like this. Also, if you are going to use this as your main stick, like you think you're modding it and putting a PS4 or a, an Xbox One or a PC board into it so you can use it at tournaments and all that, you probably want to put something in it that makes it a little heavier. Even if you've got non-slip padding all over the bottom on this thing, you probably, you'll find that it will slip around in your, in your, in your hand. I mean, I just, I mean, it depends on the way that you play with your arcade stick. If you're very, very dainty with your movements and you're only doing things like this and you, you never move your hands and everything is done with your fingertips, then obviously, yeah, it's not gonna move anywhere. But if you hold the stick that I, like I do, where you've got your hand on the stick and, you know, it's not that I'm being violent with it, but just the way that I hold the stick, it means that I don't hold the stick in place. The, I, when I'm using the lever, my hands are fairly loose and just the stick is just has to stay put by itself and all the movements actually move the stick about. Personally, I think it's better for your arms to let them move freely like this, but if you, if you are the type of player where you keep your hand on the stick and you keep it in place, and as you can see, it doesn't move anywhere, even if it's a quite a light stick. So that's one way to, to deal with the issue. But even if you find a way to get prevent the stick from moving around a lot, 
I find that this, 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 this spring, it, maybe it's because the spring is 20 years old, but you, you may want to either replace the spring in here or just replace it with a stick that has more tension. And as far as I'm aware, it should be quite easy to replace with a Sanwa style or a Seimitsu LS style stick inside here and you can pick them up for like 20 or 30 dollars easily. These buttons, as far as I'm aware, they can be drilled out so that you can fit 30 millimeter buttons and definitely, even though, oh, look, they feel like cheap. They feel like cheap buttons. They feel cheaper than the buttons that come with the original Quanba drone. Even the drone that doesn't come with Sanwa buttons. I feel like buttons on that stick feel better. Hold on a second. All right, so this is my Quanba drone and actually it's got a Sanwa stick in it now and it's also got Sanwa buttons. But originally it came with a Quanba stick and Quanba buttons and they felt actually, to be honest, quite similar, but these just feel a little bit more solid, a little nicer. And so if you're thinking of picking up this Dreamcast original arcade stick, then do consider that the buttons that come with it feel quite cheap. Like they don't, they're not very responsive as in they don't come up very quickly, but they're not completely unusable. They're fine. You can totally play with this. It's just not ideal. I would change them out pretty quickly. And I guess the main last thing about this stick is that it is loud. It would be much quieter if there were fewer metal parts in it, I think. It would be quieter if it were less hollow. The way that the parts are screwed together, it's probably not very tightly put together. It's, it's, it's basically a giant echo chamber, this thing. That being said, one of the big benefits of having this stick if you're playing on an original Dreamcast is you do have the VMU. So as I understand it, if you were to play on a Dreamcast using a modern controller and an adapter, you might not be able to plug the VMU into it. And so you'd have to plug the VMU into something like an original Dreamcast controller like this. And then I don't know, swap the arcade stick in after you've logged in or maybe have this plugged in permanently as the second player controller or something. So if that's gonna be a compatibility issue for whatever title that you're playing, maybe it's not Capcom versus SNK, that's worth considering. This does work natively in this controller, the VMU unit. But if you have a way of getting around that, like putting this into a different controller in the second player slot or something, then you don't really need this stick. It does look really cool. And I think if you modded it so that it were heavier, quieter, st a sturdier, stiffer lever, and quieter, more responsive buttons, then actually you've got a very, very nice little stick here. It's also, it would be nice, again, if it were less small. If you happen to leave your legs like this when you play, then that's totally fine. But if you're like me and your legs naturally come out and splay out like this, then I think personally, I would, I would like a stick that's a little bit wider on the left and a bit wider on the right. Anyway, that's all for now. I will probably try playing with this stick on stream. So if you want to watch the streams where we're playing Capcom vs. SNK 2 or maybe some Soul Calibur, or if I can get my hands on it, it'd be nice to pick up Marvel vs. Capcom 2 because in fact, I have never played Marvel vs. Capcom 2, so since I've got the Dreamcast up and running, it might be nice to try that on stream sometime. If you want to watch, if you want to watch that stream, do join us on Twitch. I'll put the link in the description below. And keep in mind that if you want to still stay notified of what's going on with the streams and all that, you can also follow me on Twitter and on Discord as well, where you can hang out and meet other people who enjoy arcade sticks and classic retro games and Dreamcast stuff stuff about Japan, gear of any sort, join us on Discord, link to that is also below. And if you're not already, make sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel, and I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.